YouTube, this is Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher, and I am back today with episode number 56. Today is Friday, September 15th, and it has been three weeks since I have visited with you guys. I have had a lot of stuff happening over the past three weeks, and I'm excited to share that with you and catch up. So, my plan going forward is to record on Fridays every other week and looking at the calendar I think that should be good um, everyone's at school on Friday in the morning and I can sit down and get organized and get recording so hopefully we'll be on a more regular schedule now that things have settled into school um, everyone at my house is well knock on wood <laughs> Um, and school's going great for everyone too. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started because I have a lot on my, I'm looking at my notes. I, it's looks like chicken scratch, but I have all the information. So, um, what kind of has been going on is sampler September has started since my last video. I had a birthday with a birthday start that I haven't started yet, but I'm going to start it before the end of the month. Um, uh, I went to the 141 Design Pep Rally last weekend. So a week ago today, I was at the retreat with my friends stitching, and it's hard to believe that it has already been a week since we were there. Um, time has just flown. And as far as the retreat, I'm going to share some stuff today and then I will either make a separate video um, specifically to the retreat or I'll share the rest in my next floss tube at the end of the month um, because I was not able to bring everything home with me. I had to leave some for Chantel to ship to me. So I'm still waiting for that, but I didn't want to wait anymore to record my video. So I figured I'll share some now and then I can share some in a different video or next time either one. Um, I, let's see, I've had two finishes to share with you guys. Um, I also, since the last video have, and I think, oh, I do have it. I have gotten my subscription box from the fanciful flamingo Alicia. I ordered her, um, new subscription box. And today, the pre-orders for the next box have come out. It is a subscription, so when you sign up on her website, which I'll put a link below to the website to where you can sign up, it's a bi-monthly box. You can either sign up for to just get charged every other month, or you can choose to pay for three boxes up front, or for the whole year, which would be six boxes. So it gives you a couple different options. Um, I did just order my next box, which is Christmas, and the designer is Erin Elizabeth, and this box is also great, and I'll share this um, later in the video. But this came. Also, Alicia is hosting Stitch Florida, and it is July 25th through the 27th in 2024. So next year, um, it is at the Embassy Suites in Orlando on I Drive, and I have had fond memories at the hotel from college and um, going down there. So it's a great hotel. I've stayed there before, and Alicia most recently has stayed there and said that they have a great breakfast. I know that they have um, like happy hour and. They used to have snacks out. I don't know if they still do like for happy hour, um, which is complimentary when you stay there. Um, but the retreat sounds awesome. She does not have designer a designer, but she will have uh, lots of exclusives that you will get as a um, participant. She does have Carrie from Tiger Lily Designs is going to be coming to teach a class on courting. Um, I'm going to 
going along with a lot of my friends. I know Chantel from 141 Design Company is going. And when I asked Alicia yesterday, she said there are 10 spots left, or 10 or 11, now I'm forgetting, but 10 or 11 spots left. And you can, if those spots sell out, you can get on the wait list. Um, but I know people are saying it's hot in Florida in July, but we're going to be inside. Everyone who lives in Florida has lived through it. It's not a big deal. Um, you just stay inside and stitch. So what better than to stay inside and stitch with a bunch of your friends? Um, there's great restaurants right around the area. Um, it's a really good location for the retreat because you can walk to a lot of places. So if you are on the fence or this is your first time hearing about it, go over to her website, which the website is thefancifulflamingo.myshopify.com and I'll put it right here and then I'll also put it below. So I'll put a clickable link so you can just click it and go straight to the website. And that's, so the retreat is on the website as well as her subscription box. And hopefully before I, or hopefully the box does not sell out before I post the video, <laughs> um, because I know she was sending um, the link to all of her email subscribers this morning. So I'm going to try to edit and upload the video quickly so that um, anyone who's interested, who hasn't heard about it, can get over and check that out. So that is what is going on as far as that. And I thought I had, I think that's my only, oh, one other announcement is that um, next Thursday, and I cannot remember the date and I'm um, on my phone, but next Thursday, um, Carrie from Tiger Lily Designs is going to be the guest on our Stitch Your Stash monthly Zoom. So we are re uh, starting those back up, the monthly designer Zoom. And so Carrie from Tiger Lily will be our guest. So if you are not in the Stitcher Stash Facebook group, which I'll also put that below, go ahead and head over to Facebook and join the group. And that's where the link to the Zoom will be posted. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, next Thursday. And I'll put that, of course, below too um, to let you guys know. All right. So let me go ahead and get into um, my finishes. So the first finish I had, which this finish I was able to get done before the end of, um, I'm pretty sure I finished this before September 1st, but I did say I wanted to finish, um, this piece, which is Sally Spencer by Birds of a Feather. I wanted to work on American Welcome and I wanted to finish my retreat stitch before I started my sampler September plans because I was so close to both of these larger finishes and then I wanted to get the retreat piece finished. So the first finish was on Sally Spencer by Birds of a Feather. And I love this so much. It's so cool looking. Um, so this is my finish. It's all nice and ironed. And it was really interesting stitching this. Here's my finish. Because this is 28 count creme brulee by R&R. &R. It is an older piece. I don't know if they dye this color anymore. Um, somehow I randomly came across it on a stash unload a couple, like a year or two ago. And then I had it when I started this and I thought, well, I want to do it on 28 count because I want it to be really big because it's kind of like a statement piece in my opinion. Um, and I think that they stitched it on, let's see, 32 count. So just a little bit smaller than this. But since it was on 28 count, I was using two strands and I have I mainly stitch on 36 count now with one strand and that's really why because I, 
I like to use one strand better. I think my stitches lay flatter um, and look better, but I was using two strands on this. So I <laughs> underestimated how much floss I was going to need. So I had ran run out of cast iron skillet, which is what I used for the black. Then I ran out of the red, which was Ruby Slippers by Classic Color Works. Um, and the red was the last one I had run out of. And I was like, I'm finding something that looks close enough because all I had left was to do the bird. So I stitched the bird in Ribbon Red by Classic Color Works. And I think it looks very close. And I was happy with that. So I am very excited to get this framed. I am going to send this to Total Framing for the first time and I'm going to send my other piece to Total Framing as well and see what they do with it. So I'm really excited to try them out. I've heard of awesome things and so I'm excited about that. Okay, my next finish and this well, the next finish was my retreat piece from the 141 Design Company Retreat. And let me see if I have the, have a box with all kinds of stuff. I don't, I'll put a pic, I don't have the actual finish here. I left that for Chantel to send. So I'm gonna put a picture here of me holding the whole thing finished. The fully finished. Um, I was able to finish the stitch piece, which is by Kathy Haberman from Hands On Design. And so I finished the stitching before I went to the retreat. And then at the retreat, you were to um, you do the specialty stitches. So I did two of the sections of the specialty stitches and the bottom section I'm going to use some vintage buttons to put on there, but I'm just gonna glue those on. And then I was able to fully finish it. It was too big to fit in my suitcase, so I'm waiting for her to mail that. So I will show that in person on the next video, but um, as I put a picture here so you can see what it was. So that was my second finish, and that was actually a fully finish. And then my last finish, which I was able to Finished stitching the water while I was at the retreat the last night, and then I finished the back stitching on the airplane. So this will have um, fun memories of finishing, putting the stitches in while I was at the retreat. Um, and of course, I just love the piece to begin with. So this is American Welcome by Plum Street Samplers. And I've had a few questions about where to find this. This was a retreat exclusive from the Farm Girl Dry Goods Retreat in May, I believe it was. So this will not come out to the to everyone until next year. Um, but I am in the Farm Girl Dry Goods Patreon, Michelle Rudy. She has a Patreon, and she offered the kit two Patreon members. We had to pay for it, of course, but she had talked to Paulette and was able to get some kitted. So that's how I was able to get it ahead of time. So this is with all the called for floss, fabric, everything. Um, and again, this is not available to the general public. Some people bought it and maybe will sell it on the secondary. I don't know. Um, but that's the, some people were wondering, they said they couldn't find it and that's why you can't find it because it's not really for sale. And then this is my finish and I love it so much. I did leave off, there was some one over one at the bottom, I left that off. And then there was a, some additional back stitching in the houses and I did a little bit of it, but then you were supposed to outline the windows and there was some porch railing. And I just, I, I'm i not a fan of backstitching. I don't think, I never can get it to look right. And I think it looks fine without those. So I did the parts that I felt like it needed and then I left off the others because it just, I liked how it looked better without it. Um, 
So I am extremely happy. I am also sending this to Total Framing and I wanna put this up on my wall next to This Is The Day, which I kind of feel like, oh, sorry, it keeps falling. I kind of feel like it's gonna become a Plum Street wall because I have some other Plum Streets. I mean, I love Plum Street. Um, going and I anticipate getting those finished. So I'm thinking I'm gonna kind of put all of them together on a wall because I'd like to frame them all. So this is the piece. And I cannot wait to get this framed. I'm so happy that it's finished. It was very close and I had some inspiration to get it done um, or some motivation, but it was. I was glad to finish it there so it will always remind me of um, going to Michigan and going to the retreat so that was fun all right so once those so I like I said I'm gonna send those both to total framing in Virginia and then when they come back I'll show them to you um okay so let me move those so I can get to my whips so for Sampler September, I had a plan and I'm kind of sticking to the ones I picked, but then I found some other ones that I wanted to work on. Um, so it's kind of just sampler, whatever seems to call to me. So the first one I did pick up, which this was the one I was waiting to finish working on um, I wanted to finish Sally Spencer. I wanted to finish my retreat piece. And then I let myself start my first um, sampler. So this is Dwelling Place by Teresa Kogut. And this was one of her new releases from August. And if you follow Teresa, you'll see that she also just posted a video that she has Pernici Manor coming out. And then, or per, Pernice Manor. And she is also releasing a book that has the, um, I cannot remember what it's called, but it has the pumpkin friends um, on it, the, the three ladies who um, have pumpkin heads. It's really cute. It's a fall piece. So that, and then there's a cup, there's a drum and a briscornu in the book. And those are coming out now. And I have been, to not get off, this I love, and I started this, and I'll show it in a minute, but um, the Pernici Manor, I have been waiting since Quilter Station to get my hands on that. So when that comes, I really wanna to get that. And I'm either going to start it now, or I will wait and start it um, later in 2024, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, what my plans are for that, but I want to get that for sure. Okay, so Dwelling Place, I'm using all the called for floss, which this is the called for colors, and I put them on my new floss tags, which this was what I gave out at the retreat. This is my stitched piece. I took a picture, I sent it, or I made business cards on Vistaprint, and then on the back, it just has my logo and, um, whatever the number is. So this is all the called for. There, there are, um, I think four fancy floss and the rest are DMC. So it's not, it's mainly DMC. And this is my piece. This is how far I got. Now I, this is toasted, 36 count toasted Mallow by number 12 Stitch Co. And I will preface this by my plan was to stitch on this all week long, but when I started it, it was also the week I was trying to get ready to leave for the retreat. So my stitching was, I didn't have a lot of stitching time. So I don't have a lot done, but I would like to get back to this um, before the end of the month. So I started up in the left-hand corner, I'm sorry, the right-hand corner and went over and down and then I wanted to get to some of the alphabet because my plan, and I didn't end up stitching on this at the retreat, was to try to get the alphabet done and then move down to some of the flowers 
So I could be working here and um, the border at the same time. But again, this is my piece. And her model is stitched on 36, or no, pink 40 actually. Um, count Dunes at Dusk by Legacy Fiber Arts. Yeah, 40 count, Dunes at Dusk. And I have some 36 count. I didn't have a piece big enough. So I did um, compare the colors to this, which is again, Toasted Mallow by Number 12 Stitch Co which I really, really like this linen. Um, but I, I compared the colors and it's a very similar color to Dunes at Dusk. So I knew that it would all, and I of course put the floss on there and everything to check and make sure it would all look good. So I would like to get back to doing some more of this before the end of the month. <clears throat> and I feel like also, and how I got um, Sally Spencer done and how I was able to work and get the water done on American Welcome is I'm feeling like my I'm having less stitching time because I'm pretty tired when I get home at night. But I am really being drawn to like picking one piece and just every night picking up the same piece. And then if I get sick of it, then I'll just go to another piece. But it's, com I guess comforting would be the word, to know this is the piece I'm working on and I'm not trying to make decisions because I've made other decisions throughout the day and I just wanna sit down and not think about anything. So I have found that just picking one piece and kind of sticking with it, I've been liking doing that which is not like my normal. So I'm interested to see as the year goes on, do I still stitch on tons of stuff throughout the week or do I just kind of still stick with one piece or like a big piece and a small piece? So it's interesting seeing kind of the change in my stitching um, rhythm, I guess you would say. All right, the next piece, which this is what I, I had bought this before I went to the retreat and I brought it in order and I knew I wanted to pick some fabric at the retreat to stitch it on. And it is, let me take it out of the plastic. It is a classic haunt by Hands On Design. And I picked up a piece of 32 count lilac by Fabrics by Stephanie, which Stephanie was there with her fabric and it's of course gorgeous. And I started this at the retreat with the called for colors and this is how far I got. And honestly, if I had not, if I was more awake, I probably could have finished it, but I was getting kind of tired um, that day and I decided to start filling in the water and that was when I ended up finishing filling in the water but this is that piece so I don't have a lot more to do and I can get this finished so this is on my to-do list um, in the next couple weeks probably as a just my small for to work on all right the next piece I worked on, and I pulled this out, or I got it when I got home. I had already purchased the floss, and then I ordered the chart, I think from Hollis Hands Creates. Um, this is Ann Chilton, 1847 from the Scarlet House. And it's really funny because it's not that I didn't like the design, I just, it didn't really like jump out at me until I saw, it was either Laura or Brenda, I'm pretty sure, showed the Belle Soie for it that they had bought at the attic. And that completely sold me on the chart, which is so funny because the colors, I'll show you in a second. Like when you look at the picture, it doesn't really show all of those colors. And so as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm stitching that for sure. 
and it's small, so it won't take too terribly long. So I just have a small start. I decided to do this the other night because I wanted to um, get it going so that I could use the floss because I love the floss colors and it's Belle Soir, so it's really nice to stitch with. This is, or I'm stitching it on 36 count cream and sugar by um, Fiber on a Whim, but these are the beautiful colors. And I just started on the border so if you look, oh, of course I put it back in there. Let me see if I can pull the cover out. Oh, good grief. <laughs> this is the picture and this is the colors. And I really feel like the picture does not do the piece justice, but I mean, it's really hard to get the colors to come through. I feel like on a picture, um, so sometimes to see someone show them or to pull them yourself and see, it really helps get you motivated to stitch. So I'm so excited to get working on this some more. Again, like I said, it's not very big. So if I really set my mind to it, I could get potentially get this done, um, if not this month, next month. So we'll see, because I feel like when I say I'm gonna do it, then it doesn't happen. But I really do like this. So as all of the things I, I like all the things, which is part of my problem. Um, okay, now this is Floral Motif Sampler, which I absolutely love and it's, has a funny story also. So this is the floral motif sampler by the Scarlet House. I've had this chart for at least a year, if not, well, I don't even know, maybe just, I don't think I bought it when it first came out, but I've had it for a while. Let's see. All right, it doesn't say on here. Oh, 2021. So, I don't think I bought it right when it first came out, but soon thereafter I bought it. And I love how it looks on the cover. So it calls for 40 count prairie grass. So I got a piece of, oh, of course it's in the hoop still because I was working on it. Um, I got a piece of 36 count prairie grass because I went back and forth and I was like, I'm just gonna get the piece, I'm going to get the called for. So I get a piece of 36 count prairie grass and I'm like, this does not look like the picture. This is much darker in person. And maybe the 40 count is lighter, I don't know. I wasn't gonna stitch on 40 count. So I put the piece of 36 count in my pile and I'm like, I'll use it for something else. This is too dark, I'm not stitching it. I wanna stitch it on a piece of light. So I pulled, I don't even know how many pieces of fabric, picked one, started it. Then I, somebody was talking about it on their floss tube. I think it was Chris the Camping Stitcher and she said she used prairie grass and it looked so good and all this stuff. So then I'm like, well, maybe I want to use prayer grass because I wasn't very far when I had first started it on the other piece. So I thought, well, I'll get the, because I had, then I had used prayer, the piece for something else. So I'm like, I'll get another piece. Maybe it'll be lighter, a different dye lot, whatever. I get the piece. It's still dark. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so then I started stitching on it recently and this is where I got. And I really like it. Then on sun, Saturday, Sunday, no, when, sometime this Monday, Tuesday, when I got home from the retreat, Lori Holt had had her video up and I knew she had stitched this and she finished it. So I'm watching her floss tube and she did it on pie crust by 
um, kitten stitcher, her son dyes that. Um, so I had already gotten a piece of that for something else. So I pulled that out and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm going to do that. And I didn't have a piece big enough because I was using it for something else. But I did pull out Desert Tie Pan, which is very similar. And I decided, well, I'll do it on that. So I started. This is a long way to tell you what I'm doing. But I started it on Desert Tie Pan by Fox and Rabbit. Love this too. But then when I pulled it out the next day to work on it again, and I hadn't put my prairie grass piece away, I decided I actually think I like the piece of prairie grass better using all the called for colors. So now I am back to, I'm going to save this piece for something else. So I'm not getting rid of this. I'm just gonna save it. Cause I mean, it's a whole giant fat quarter. So I'm putting this away and I am going to keep stitching it on the 36 count prairie grass by Seraphim. And I have all the called for colors. So this is also one of my sampler pieces. And I know Annie the proper, many other people have stitched it, but I've watched Annie the proper stitcher stitch it from the beginning um, and she's getting close to a finish. So I really want to get this going. And everyone who has stitched it has talked about how, because it's a whole bunch of motifs, each motif is like a little mini finish. So I'm thinking I might just get motivated to get a whole bunch done, but then I might kind of slowly stitch motif by motif. Um, we'll see. But this is a piece that I, like I said, since I bought it, I've loved it. I love all the colors. And here's the colors. Um, and I, I want to stitch it and get it up on my wall. So it's just a funny, I liked something else. I tried it and then I ended up back at the called for, which is exactly what happened with this is the day. So I'm coming to realize that yes, I do want to pull fabric from stash and I'm okay with that. Like dwelling place, love it on that fabric. But sometimes you just need to pull the called for fabric and the called for floss and do what the designer said because it looks awesome. So I don't know. I'm, I, this I'm loving, but I, um, it's just funny how all that happens. So that's another whip and I'm going to get back to this. I want to get working on it. Um, I love it so much. And then this one I haven't started, but I am thinking about starting and I still haven't figured out which linen I want. So I'm kind of feeling like I'm having a Scarlet House like week, two weeks, something like that. Cause I think I'm going to continue this into next week. Um, and then at the end of next week, I have something else to show. But um, this was also a new release from her. This was a piece from um, the, from summer school last year at the attic. Uh, Tanya had released this. So now this is out to everyone. And I have all the floss. Um, I do, she used cocoa, uh, 36 count cocoa. I wanna use something a little bit lighter, but I have not decided. So this is also on the docket. Uh, so I'm thinking about starting this. So then I'll have the three Scarlet House pieces going and I'm thinking that that dwelling place, I need to do my birthday start. And then I have one other, a birthday start for someone else I wanna work on. I'm thinking that's pretty good for um, the rest of the month, but who knows. Um, oh, this I also, this was from my whip parade I had just pulled this out the other day because I didn't know what I wanted to work on. I didn't want to pull hold anything new. So I pulled out Maker and Mender. I did not actually work on this, but I felt like maybe if I pulled it out, it would motivate me. So this is my Maker and Mender by um, With Eye Needle and Thread. And I did change a few of the colors. So I'm thinking I might pull this back out just to get some more on it, maybe finish it up. 
So then that would be one more finish from my whip basket that I showed on my whip parade. So I just pulled this out, like I said, it's in my my basket downstairs if I feel like um, I don't know what I wanna work on, then I can get this out. All right, let's put this back in here. Okay. All right, so, oh, I lied. I do have something else I am gonna start. So I didn't bring this upstairs, but this is going into plans for the rest of the month. So there's two more weeks left. Um, one, either one week or just to get it started, I am starting Merrily Merrily We Welcome Spring by Blackbird Designs, which is the piece I am using to participate in the hashtag BAP to School Sal, which is hosted by the New Hampshire Stitcher, Lauren. And I was going to start it September 1st and then I was trying to finish up my other pieces and I just haven't started it yet. But it's all kitted, ready to go. Um, so I'm going to start that for sure by the end of the month. I still need to start my own birthday start which um, is Evening Shades in the Garden by Blackbird Designs. And that was my unicorn chart and I was able to find it and I kitted it. And so I'm going to get that started. And that's not very big either. So I should be able to get that going. Um, and then I'm gonna put a small start. I will probably keep working on this other piece in October, but Moonlit Garden, from Blackbird Designs. I am stitching that with Felicia, who is Floss and Blocks on Instagram. And I, she started at the retreat. I brought it and was going to, and then I never got to start it. So that was another unicorn chart, which has now been printed in the Blackbird, the most recent Blackbird Design fall book. And so we're stitching that together. So I need to get that started as well. So the cup, I have a couple more starts, but I'll probably, continue working on those, um, or not probably, I will continue working on those into October, um, along with some other plans I have also to share of things I want to work on in October. Um, but before I get to October, um, on September 22nd, it is Alicia, the fanciful flamingo. It is her 53rd birthday. And, um, so she is starting this, which is the Rose and the Giant Pear by Hands Across the Sea. And I've had this in my stash and have wanted to start it, but then something else came up and I said, oh, I'll do it later. Oh, I kept putting it off. But she said she was going to start it. So I thought, well, this would be a perfect time to start it. And I am using, I had a piece of creme brulee from Tabby Cat, which is what it calls for. And then I kitted it up with all of the DMC. So this is all of this. So I'll be starting this along with her. And then I know Pam Brown um, is also stitching it. So anyone else, if you have this in your stash and you wanna join, um, feel free. And she does have a hashtag and I'll put it right here because I asked her and then I forgot to write it down. So I'll put the hashtag right here um, for this. And again, this is next Friday, I think it's next Friday, the 22nd is when um, we are going to start this. So I am really excited about this because I, again, I've wanted to start it. And what also motivated me is on, in, on Facebook, there is a Facebook group called um, I think it's like Friends of Hands Across the Sea or something like that. I'll put the name right here. Um, but someone had stitched all of the samplers from the red box from Nicola in blue, which is what my plan is. And I have them all here and I'm still <laughs> haven't gone very far, but I'm going to get to them. Um, but she stitched them all in blue. She stitched 
the one that has the house in it in blue, which I have figured out a conversion to do that. And then in her picture, she also has this. And I thought, well, I love this too. So I'm, I want to make a display similar to hers. And she finished this in like a long skinny pillow. And I thought that was perfect because this is really not that big. It's 177 by 65. So you could easily make this into a pillow. So that's kind of my plan for that. Now, how fast I stitch it is a whole nother story. Um, but I have a finishing plan. Um, all right, let's make sure we're caught up. Okay, so before I get to haul, I have a couple more things to talk about. Um, and I have haul, I have like some retreat stuff, some gift stuff, uh, but so for my plans, so we're getting through the end of September and then in October, I think I'm going to be switch. I might still keep a sampler or two out, but then I really want to switch into pulling out some of my fall pieces. So I have some fall in my whips that I had shown um, in my whip parade. So I'll pull some of those out. The ones I kind of really want to focus on is Grace Doth Abound. And then I have a couple smalls of from fall that I'd like to do. There's a new Stacy Nash, which I ordered things from that just came out and they haven't come yet. So I was again trying to wait to do the video, but I figured I'm just gonna do the video <laughs> because otherwise I would never get it recorded. Um, so there's a new Stacy Nash that I really like. It's fall, I wanna work on that. Um, I ordered, and it's, I think it's on the way. I have Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House. And I have ordered the conversion from Shepherd's Bush. Um, and it's on straw, 36 count straw with all over dyed floss. And if you wanna see what it looks like started, Lori Holt and Chrissy, who is Crosshatch Quilts have both started this and they're for sure my inspiration to use the Shepherd's Bush, Bush conversion. This is a huge piece and so I felt like it does have a lot of floss, um, but I felt like if I was going to put the work in to do it, I really want it to look what like what I want it to look like. So that's why I ended up um, biting the bullet and ordering the conversion. So I'm waiting for that to come, but I really, really want to start this. Um, I also want to, um, let's see, that was my stuff back there. I'm also going to do, um, along with Fat Quarter Shop, which they do hashtag Stitchtober, I'm going to work on Lori Holt's Stitchy Stars in Autumn Colors. And they have a floss pack on their website um, with their conversion. And what I did is I went off of the colors and then I bought um, over dyed floss to match. So like there's like a yellow and an orange and a brown. So I just bought some different um, over dyes that match it. So I will be participating with them in that stitch along. Um, and then also, and this again hasn't come, I'm still waiting, like I said, on some orders, but I ordered from Brick City Cross Stitch, which all any store can buy this, um, but I ordered specifically from them. Um, Chrissy, finally a farm girl, designed along with um, Peter, who is O for Pete's sake, and um, Chris, or er, no, Linda, Stitchy Linda. The three of them together collaborated to create this old Florida sampler. And it's really cool. And I am a native Floridian. I was born in Orlando and the furthest I moved was to Kissimmee. And then I'm now I'm back in Orlando, uh, Central Florida area, um, which that's, it was 45 minutes from my parents' house and, and now I'm back five minutes from their house. but. 
So being a native Floridian, I really wanted to stitch this and they are doing a stitch along uh, starting October 1st and Peter has converted, I'm pretty sure it's all in DMC, he's converted it to overdyed. So I'm going to use his conversion. Also, and I'll try to put a picture right here of what it looks like. There's words at the bottom. Um, I believe it's Linda's grandmother's name and um, like, okay, I'm pretty sure it says Ocala. Um, but Peter is going to put an alphabet in there and I liked that idea. So um, I'm going to stitch along with them in the over dyed and then I'm gonna make some tweaks um, as I go also. But I'm really excited to have to get that piece and start it and um, and put something special on there that pertains to me um, being that I am also a native Floridian. So, and there's not very many who have been born and still live here in Florida. Um, it's hard to find those. Um, so that's kind of my October plans. Um, obviously, it's all subject to change, but so far that's kind of what I pulled and the direction that I, I'm kind of feeling, finish up some samplers and then get into some um, some autumn things. As I mentioned, I keep mentioning my whip basket for my parade. I have that all sitting here. And as kind of the season comes, I've been pulling from that and trying to get some things finished. So Sally Spencer, American Welcome, and um, well, World So Sweet, which I already finished. Those are all from, and um, the retreat piece, those were all from my whip parade, and those are all finishes. So I'm feeling really good about getting things finished, and then even if I add more things, whatever. It's it's all a hobby, it's all for fun. So um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about before showing you more fun things is um, Alicia, had heard from uh, Pam, from Pam and St uh, Just Keep Stitching, that she's going to do, sorry, um, she is going to do 20, or was thinking about, I don't even know if this is actually Pam's plan, but this is where Alicia had heard about it from, 24 starts in 2024. So then Alicia texted me and said, oh, I like this idea. Let's um, incorporate it into Stitch or Stash. So I thought, well, that's a great idea. So I, she's doing 24 starts. I am either doing 12 whips and 12 starts, or I'm going to do 24 whips and 24 starts. So even though that equals 48, I'm still using the number 24. So some combination of that I am going to do. I've pulled or I've written down already a couple things I want to start. So the starts will kind of dictate if I do 12 or 24. I'm kind of leaning towards doing 12 starts and 12 whips. So then throughout the year, if, if, who are we kidding? More things will come up I want to stitch. Then if I start other things, I won't feel like I have all these things I have, I've said I'm gonna start and I haven't started because that puts me at one, before January 1st, I will have one start a month planned and one whip planned to work on. And then anything else I do will be extra. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that that's gonna be my, what I'm gonna choose, but I haven't gotten there. I just wanted to put it out there that that is what I'm going to be doing for 2024. So if you're interested and want to start thinking about or pulling, like I've gone through, I need to go back through um, all of my charts, think pulling things out that I like, oh, I want to start this. And all of it is things that I have. Um, so going through your things and finding things that you bought and you love, um, some of them might be kits you already have, some you might kit up yourself, but as 
I'm kind of going with, I want to already have the chart. And then if I need to buy floss and fabric, but if I can find that in my stash, that's even better. Um, so we are going to have a hashtag and our hashtag is S Y S for stitch your stash 24 in 24. And obviously there'll probably be other hashtags if other people are doing it, but that's the hashtag that uh, myself and Alicia are going to use. And like I mentioned, you can make it however you want. They could be 24 whips, 24 starts, or combination of whatever. Um, but I am starting to think about that as we are getting to the end of the year. I know we still have a few more months before we end 2023, but it's better to start thinking now. If you are a planner, if you're not, you might not want to do this at all. Um, but if you are, you might want to start looking through your stuff. And um, I know I'm always coming across something and I'm like, oh, I want to work on that. So I've kind of started putting stuff aside and then I'll go through it and, and figure out what my actual plan is. But that, I just wanted to put that out there. All right, now I think we're to haul and then we have giveaways. So it's going to be whatever's on my table. So it's like haul slash a few things from the retreat. And then I'll, like I said, I'll share more about the retreat in another video. But I do want to mention about the 141 Design Retreat. It was amazing. Chantel and her group, her daughters, everyone did amazing over and above and Kathy the stuff she gave us the teaching phenomenal um it was just it was probably the best retreat I've been to it every detail was so thought out um the amount of things you came away with whether it was um your finished piece the extras that Chantel gave us, the extras Kathy gave us, um, being able to look at the fabric from Stephanie, um, Michelle Lee Quilts was there, Tammy Blaylock was there. I mean, it was, it was so much fun. All of our friends were there. Um, Chantel's town of Williamston was perfect. The retreat was at the, um, old gym, which is the high school gym, which has been turned into an event facility. You can walk to the grocery store, to her store, to restaurants. So I felt like at some other retreats, you have to drive to go to a restaurant and obviously you have to eat and you're going with your friends, which is fun. But then there's like a lot of lost time in driving from one place to the other. Um, and so it was so, everything was so convenient. You didn't feel like you were losing out on anything. You weren't missing out. Everything was planned. Um, the Smalls Exchange was awesome. Um, so the whole thing was great. She is hosting another retreat next year in September. I don't remember the exact dates. And Priscilla and Chelsea from Stitching with the Housewives are the special guests, which will be amazing. Um, and like I said, everything that Chantel did for the retreat is over and above. Um, it was really, really fun. So if you're in Michigan or you want to go visit Chantel's shop, I highly recommend signing up for the retreat. Um, it'll be a great time. All right. So let me show you some of my haul that I've gotten in the past couple weeks. Um, a few different charts I got. This is Elizabeth Charnelay by Lottie Da. I saw this um, on So Tattered and I just loved this. So this is going in my stash. Tired Trio. I bought this because the theme in um, my classroom at school is sloths. So I'm thinking about stitching this for my um, teacher partner. And then this is one, I bought this off of Stash Unload and I have wanted to do this for a while because I saw Elizabeth Ann do it. This is labor for learning, but I thought this would be appropriate to do. Um, and there's another chart I'm waiting on too. 
that I'd like to stitch to commemorate starting back working and teaching. Um, so I do have this kitted to potentially start soon, but other things kind of came up that I wanted to work on. So I'll just put that to the side. I did get my color in cotton. This is from September. These are some of the colors. Some different linen. I just start piling everything on the table <laughs> to show. These were from Stash Unload. I was able to get, and they're actually kits, and I think they were from maybe Dying to Stitch had done this. This was from... Um, this is the cereal bowl collection. This is number one. And so it's kitted with the floss. It doesn't have the fabric. This is lesson number two with the floss and it comes with the chenille to do around the edge. And then this is Mary two and I have Mary one. So I thought these might be fun to pull out uh, at Christmas time to work on. And these are all things I got on Stash and Load. This I thought was really pretty for fall. This is from Lone Elm, and this is on one of their boxes. Hazel Hollyhock. But that was like a small little sampler, pretty. Okay, this was actually from eBay. I was able to find this, which I have had a hard time finding. It's an excellent condition and I am looking forward to stitching something from this and this Christmas peppermint and holly this is an out of print book you have to find it on the secondary market I found it on eBay I've been looking for a long time and I every time I think I see it it's not there okay then oh Okay, so I did not know about this. So I last, I went to my LNS Bricks, or not Brick City, Needle Orts in Altamont Springs, and they had these charts, which are, they have winter, spring, and summer. I'm sorry, winter, fall, and summer. There's no spring. And I thought that it was just this design in the book. No, there's two other designs. This design up here and this drum is are also in these books. And maybe you are you knew this. Then the summer one. So I ended up getting all three of them because I'm like, well, I love the other designs also. Has the other part of the sampler. And then it also has this flower and this bird. And the fall one has more too. The fall one I actually have kitted up to work on. And the fall piece is a, it's a blackbird and it goes, you finish it on this little card um, tray. And this is from Hobby Lobby. So I picked this up because I want to stitch that piece and put it on here. So I had bought this, but I had no clue that they had these other designs in those books. So I was able to get those. And then, um, let's see. I already showed, I, I had just got some different linen from um, number 12 Stitch Co, which I showed you guys. I love that linen. Um, okay. I'm going to show the box from Alicia and then I'm going to do the giveaways from last week and I'm just going to do the rest of the retreat in a separate video because I have a lot more stuff to do and the video is already getting long. Um, I do want to show this was a gift I got from Nicole. Nicole Spore, she made this case for me and brought it to me for a birthday present. So I love it. It has Pixie Noel on it. And the inside, 
it looks like this. And this is actually the chart that Kathy gave us at the retreat, one of them. So I put that in here, kitted up, but I love this so much. So this is the Ashley case by Chris Sherman, but instead of having the ties, Nicole put the elastic like Carrie from Tiger Lily hers. So she like combined the two patterns, but I love this. I love Tasha Noel fabric. So that was a really fun gift. All right, last thing, and then I'm gonna talk about the giveaways. So in a box from Alicia, the Fanciful Flamingo, I just wanna show what we got real quick. Um, it was super cute. You opened it up, it's in pink um, paper. And then it came with this, a separate sheet that told you all of the stuff that was in the box. So it came with floss that goes with the chart, um, sticker. It came with a thread keeper and it has her logo on it. This is a bag tag. It has a piece of finishing fabric that you could use to finish the piece or for something else. And as you can tell, everything in this box has to do with fall. She sent some candy. These are counting pins that she made. She loves to use a little, um, the little tension hoop, so she sent that. And then she sent the chart, which this is the exclusive chart. It is by KEB Studio Creations. And I believe you can find her on Etsy. And there was also a little freebie in here. Let me see if I can show it without showing the chart. This is, oh my goodness. This is the free chart we got too. It's a little flamingo with a pumpkin in her hoop. Super cute. So you got that. Then also in addition to the, all of that stuff, there is an exclusive Zoom with Karen from KEB and she gives you this card that has what I'm covering up. It has the information to get on the Zoom with her. So it has the meeting ID and the password and everything. Um, so on that day, we will whoever bought the box will have an exclusive Zoom with her. So I thought that was, and this is the chart. Again, like I said, so pretty. Um, and I do not know anything about if the chart will be available, if it's exclusive for a year. I don't know any of that stuff, but um, I would highly recommend if you're on the fence, getting the box, this upcoming box, it's going to be Christmas themed. And like I said, Erin um, Elizabeth is who designed the pattern that's gonna be in it. And I am sure it's gonna be adorable because her stuff is so cute. Um, so order the box. <laughs> um, all right. So for the giveaways from last week or three weeks ago, whatever, um, you had to answer what was your favorite upcoming release. So many fun patterns people were talking about that they want to stitch. Um, there's so many new, old, all across the board, great um, patterns out there. Um, to choose from, from, which we're so lucky to have all of those. So, if you are a winner, email me at sweetwaterstitcher at gmail.com your uh, address and then what you won, and I'll get it in the mail. The first one, I will put you in touch with um, Amy, Mrs. Flossie, and it's to pick a chart from her Etsy shop. But just send me an email and then I'll connect the two of you. So for number one, the winner was Carolyn Bruner. Carolyn Bruner, and I'll put it right here, the name. 
Um, number two, the winner of Grateful, Thankful, Blessed by uh, With Thy Needle and Thread. The winner was Teacher Loves Beauty. And that's your YouTube name, Teacher Loves Beauty. So if you can tell me what your actual name is too when you send me the email so I can mail this to you. And then number three, which was the piece of linen, the winner is Megan Musselman. Megan Musselman. So congratulations to the three of you and send me your information and I will um, get that stuff out to you. Now for this week, I am gonna do two giveaways. And then also I wanted to remind everybody, I and I know I haven't had a video in a while, but I am still trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. So if you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It lets you know when I have videos come out, it'll be in your subscription. Um, it helps to get my video out to other people. If you're new and you're stopping by, hit the subscribe button as well to help me get to 10,000. Once I get there, I have a lot of different giveaways um, lined up and I'll do a special video with the giveaways um, to just say thank you to those of you who have been subscribers supporting. Um, so that's where, that's my goal right now. And I'd love to get to that um, in the next month or so, so I can get the giveaways to everybody. Um, so for this week, um, I guess let's answer, are you like, what are just, what are you stitching on? Have you already started stitching fall? Are you still, are you participating in sampler September and stitching on samplers? Are you doing smalls? Kind of what are you, um, what are you working on? And also in order to win, you need to like the video. You need to be a subscriber be over 18. And then for these, um, if you can be in the US, and that would be great. So the for number one, this is compliments of, um, oh my goodness, it was Stacy Stitches Creative Studio. And now I think it's, I did not write this down, thread and needle. I'm going to put it right here. It's Stacy from Stacy Stitches Creative Studio. I'm putting the name of her shop right here because I, it's she changed her name and I haven't gotten used to saying it yet. But she is she donated this chart and she will be sending this out to you. This is Little Rose Garden from From the Heart Needle Art. These are this is from her um, little sampler series. I love these so much. So this is the giveaway for this month. And also I'll put a link to her shop below too. Um, if you use the code Sweetwater, it will get you 10% off everything in her shop, um, except for not the retreat, but all of the stuff, the wood pieces uh, that her husband makes, the charts, fabric, floss, all that stuff. So use the code Sweetwater and it will get you 10% off, but that's um, giveaway number one. So if you're interested, put the number one along with your comment. And number two is a fat quarter of parchment by 36 count parchment by Atomic Ranch. And this is a fat quarter of this fabric. So this is number two. <sighs> All right. Well, I hope you guys stuck around. <laughs> um, if not, you're coming back to watch the rest of it. Um, this was lots to show. It's been three weeks. Um, I enjoyed sharing with you guys today. I will be back in two weeks, which I believe the date is the 29th. So I'll share what I stitched on the rest of September. I'm going to try to post some pictures on Instagram. I haven't been good about posting what I've been doing, but I'm trying to remember. Uh, but I want to, to make sure to get it out to you guys on here. Um, but I hope you guys have a great two weeks. Um, enjoy. i uh, hoping some weather's changing. When we were in Michigan, the weather was awesome. Um, so cool. And then, of course, come home and it's hot here still. But 
it's better than it was. So, but that's how it always is. No surprise. Um, but I hope you guys have a great couple weeks, lots of stitching done, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.